In this video we are going to look at perpendicular lines. Now perpendicular lines are exactly the opposite of parallel lines. So parallel lines have the same gradient whereas perpendicular lines are completely opposite. The one line would go for example in this direction and the other line would go in the complete opposite direction. So here we can see some everyday life examples of this signboard. Well those two lines would be parallel because they are hitting each other at 90 degrees. They are going in the completely opposite directions. This four-way stop over here is also parallel because, I mean perpendicular, because these lines are hitting each other at 90 degrees. So perpendicular lines hit each other at 90 degrees. But what exactly does this mean mathematically? So when we looked at parallel lines, we said that parallel lines have the same gradient. However, perpendicular lines are completely opposite to each other and they always hit at 90 degrees. It's quite interesting, but what this means mathematically is that if you multiply the two gradients together, if the lines are perpendicular, your answer should always be negative 1. So we can say that the gradient of line 1 times by the gradient of line 2 will give you an answer of minus 1. If that happens, then the lines are perpendicular. Let's quickly see how this would work. So let's say the gradient of this line is 2. Well, 2 is the same as 2 over 1, right? So then what is the complete opposite of that? Well, the complete opposite of that is this. You have to switch the number over, so it'll be 1 over 2, and then change the sign. So if it's a positive, then change it to a negative. So we'll change this to a negative. If we now had to multiply these two lines together, or sorry, if we had to multiply the two gradients together, what you would see is that the 2's would cancel, the 1's would cancel, and you'd just be left with minus. So you'd be left with an answer of minus 1. So whenever the gradients of two lines, when you multiply them together, if that gives you an answer of minus 1, then the lines are perpendicular. So let's try a few examples. The question asks us, are the two lines perpendicular? So here we have line AB and we have line CD. So let's go work out the gradient of each of them and then see if their lines are going to be, or if their gradients are going to be perpendicular. So let's take a look at line AB first. Well, if we use the gradient formula, I'm going to call point A number 2 and point B number 1. That's just my choice. It doesn't have to be your choice. So you can choose it the other way around, but you'll still get the same answer. So if we use the formula, it says that we should take the Y value of point number 2. Well, the Y value of point number 2 is 2. Then we should use a minus. And the Y value of point number 1 is a 4. Then we go to the x value of point number 2, which is 3. Then it says minus. And then we take the x value of point number 1, which is a 5. And if you had to go type all of this in on the calculator, you're going to get an answer of 1. So the gradient of AB is 1. So now we can move on to the gradient of CD. And so I'm going to call C point number 2 and D point number 1. And so the formula says I should start with the Y value of point number 2, which is a 3 minus, then point the Y value of point number 1, which is a 6. Then it's the X value of point number 2, which is minus 1. And then the X value of point number 1, which is 2. And if I had to go work this out, I would end up with 1. And so line CD's gradient is 1. And so these two lines are not going to be perpendicular because if you multiply 1 with 1, you are not going to get minus 1, but you're rather going to get 1. So in fact, because these two gradients are the same, they are actually called parallel. Well done to any of those of you who remember that. If the gradients are the same, it's parallel. Moving on to number 2. Let's work out the gradient of EF. So I'm going to call this point number 2 and call this point number 1. Then use the gradient formula which starts with y value of point number 2 which is a 4 and the y value of point number 1 which is an 8. x value of point number 2 which is a 2 minus the x value of point number 1 which is 4. And if you had to go work this out you're going to end up with 2. So the gradient of EF is 2. 
let's work out the gradient of GH. Well, G is, uh, I'm going to call G the point number two, and H I'm going to call point number one. Well, we've done so many gradient questions. I'm sure you guys are experts by now. So the Y value of point number two is five, and the Y value of point number one is 5.5. .5. The x value of point number 2 is minus 1, and the x value of point number 2 is minus 2. And so at the top you would get negative a half, or negative 0 0.5, and at the bottom you're going to end up with 1. And if you type all of this in on the calculator, you're going to end up with negative a half. Okay, so now what we do, so GH's gradient is negative a half. So now what we do is we multiply those two gradients together. And if you had to do that on the calculator, you would get an answer of minus 1. And we said that if two lines, when you multiply their gradients together and you get minus 1, then mathematically that means that those lines are perpendicular. Which means that they cross each other at exactly 90 degrees. Some lines cross each other, but it doesn't make an angle of 90 degrees. But if it does make an angle of 90 degrees, then we call it perpendicular, and that happens when you multiply the two gradients together to get minus 1.